what's up? My name is Technova here for Troubleshoot and welcome to this quick sponsored crash course on Mini Tool Movie Maker. If you're used to using Windows XP, Windows 7, it came with a built-in Movie Maker that's now only really being reintroduced in Windows 11. But if you've looked into actually using it, you'll know that there's a very bad limitation that forces you to pay for it in order to export in anything higher than I think it's 720p. Why should you do that when there's free alternatives, especially if you're trying to put together a really simple video, put music over video, add simple transitions, and things like that. Well, good news for you, you don't need expensive paid software like Adobe Premiere Pro or complicated software that's free like DaVinci Resolve. Instead, this is super basic and anyone can use it. I'll be showing you how to download and install it in this video, as well as throw together a quick video. While this video is sponsored, my opinions are my own, and I've only really been given a couple points to mention. I was free to do with this guide as I please. To download Minitool Movie Maker, in the description down below, you'll find a link to this page over here. Simply click download now, and an exe file will download. Click on this to open it up, click run, and if prompted for admin, click yes. Then we'll see the screen here. We can simply click install now, or you can choose custom installation to choose a different install folder. I'll click install now and wait for the program to download and install. When it's done, simply click start now and the program will then launch. On the launch screen, we're given an option to create a new project, open an existing project and choose from a bunch of movie templates over here. These you can simply drop your own images and videos into for super easy editing. For me though, I'll be creating a new project. When you open up a new project, you'll see something similar to this. In the top left, we have different tabs and we'll start on the media tab, my album. It's really easy to chop up gameplay, chop up videos that you record on your phone or anything like that, add some basic text and transitions and some of the new elements. Let's go ahead and import a couple of simple pictures. I'll be using Pexels to download a couple of sample images that we can use in our video. Let's go for something simple like travel and I'll also get some videos as well. I'll navigate into my downloads folder and you'll see a bunch of images and videos that I have prepared here. I'll simply select everything and choose open. To me, something that makes the software attractive is that it supports MKV files as well as a whole bunch of other file formats. Something like Premiere Pro even doesn't support MKV. You have to transcode it into MP4 to import it. So I'm clicking open to get imported into our project and we can start by dragging them onto the timeline at the very bottom. It's super simple, it's block editing, you just drag what you want and they appear in the timeline ready for you to scrub through. Some of the basic things that you'll be using is selecting it and cropping either the ends of it by dragging and dropping the end or by scrolling to somewhere halfway through and clicking the split icon in order to create a cut. Then we can reorganize clips and of course delete them if we'd like. It's the same as trimming. There is also an advanced trimming screen clicking the split button up here. Then full split and it gives us a couple of extra controls including split and trim in a much bigger view. For me though, using it in a timeline down here is fine. We can zoom in and out by dragging this bar in the top right and adjust videos to be our desired length. Simply sticking videos next to each other and playing it through It'll go from one clip to another as you'd expect. Super simple block editing. With any image or video selected, you'll have an image property tab on the far right that you can minimize later on and show once again to adjust saturation, brightness, contrast, etc. We also have a rotation tab where you can rotate images themselves or of course on the basic tab, apply a 3D LUT to give it a couple of different color presets. It's super basic and does exactly what you'd be hoping for. If we'd like to spice up our video edit, we can of course import audio or we can head across to the music tab and use some of the sample music here. Simply dragging and dropping it in into the audio section of the timeline, we can place it wherever we'd like. Let's play through this video in the super basic form that it is currently. Already pretty good. Let's go ahead and apply a transition from the transition tab up here. We can choose from the all tab or from the different categories if you know what you're looking for. Super simple icons to show you exactly what everything it does. Hovering over a transition gives you a preview of what the effect looks like and we can simply drag and drop it into the transition spot over here. Doing so and playing it once again, our simple edit has been created. We can choose whether to overlap the transition prefix or postfix to choose how the timing works. It can either start later, earlier, or perfectly in the center between two clips, images, etc. Also, of course, you can adjust the duration to get them to happen shorter or faster. 
Heading up to the effect tab at the very top, we can choose from a couple of other color presets here and drag them onto our videos, images, etc. Simply dragging it onto our clip, it gives us extra color control compared to the default where we can adjust contrast, saturation, brightness, and a 3D light. Something else you'll notice is because I've clicked on a video clip, we can also control the speed of the clip itself, make it slower, make it faster, reverse it, and of course, adjust the audio as well. We can add a fade in, fade out, or change the volume of the entire clip as well. With simple color effects added, let's head across to the text tab at the very top to add some information to what's actually going on. We can choose from any of the presets up here, or of course, specifically captions, credits, and titles. There are differences between these captions we can place above videos, images, etc., and enter our own text as well as move them around. As such, we can move around individual elements and position them exactly as we see fit. Hitting play, we'll see exactly what it looks like. Awesome. The credits up here will be placed in similarly to videos and clips. It appears as a block. We can adjust text the same way that we would with captions, but of course it's a block of its own. Hitting play, it'll scroll through, of course, as you'd expect from something like this. There's also a title tab for intros for our videos, etc. Let's drag and drop one of these into the timeline and preview what this looks like. Simple. So I'll put the title at the very beginning and the credits at the end. I'll stretch the audio to fit a bit better and I'll give it a bit of a fade out of say four or five seconds. Heading up to motion at the very top, we can make blank images look a bit more interesting. From this bike clip over here, it simply goes into a picture with nothing interesting happening. The motion tab over here lets us fix that. We can drag and drop pretty much any effect from here onto an image or a clip. And after doing so, you'll see that the clip is now animated to be something a little bit more interesting. Finally, the elements tab at the very top is a new feature that allows you to put overlays onto videos, text, etc. And there are a ton of these to download from the internet here. If we head back to the beginning to the plane flight, for example, we can head across to the travel tab and add one of these effects from here. Dragging it onto my timeline above everything else, as this is multi-track, we can adjust the time of it and put it in a good place. There we go. Now, all of a sudden, our simple images have been stuck together with a few simple effects. Of course, this doesn't look too great, but it's definitely a lot more interesting than just having a group of pictures that you share with other people. I could have put a ton more effort into making this look a lot better. And of course, it's not something too amazing, but it is basic and it does get the job done better than nothing at all. It's exactly what you'd be hoping for if you'd like to quickly stitch videos together and things like that. Now that we've talked about actually putting things together, how do we save it into a final video file? Well, simply hitting Control S allows us to save the project itself. You'll have to put in a name if you haven't already. I'll call this, say, Travel, and it saves as an MMM file, a mini tool movie maker file. This isn't the final video. Instead, in the very top, click the Export button, and we can choose a format, PC or device. And on the right hand side, we can give it a name, choose a format or container, choose where to save it to. And of course, adjust the resolution, which you can't do in lots of other software. Clicking settings, we can choose best, better, or good. I'll choose best. And something else you don't get a lot in other software is hardware encoding. We can choose NVENC if we have an NVIDIA graphics card or something more CPU based like LibX264. I'll be choosing NVENC as it's a lot faster because it uses my graphics card to speed up encoding. We can choose the resolution from the drop down here and a bitrate as well if you'd like to choose this manually. Choosing from best, better, and good will automatically set the bitrate as necessary. I'll click OK and choose export down here. Then our video is compiled and saved, and we can click find target to open up a new file browser in our output folder. Here's my movie, 18.4 megabytes, and opening it up, it plays exactly as you'd expect in your favorite media player. Awesome. So we've now stitched together a bunch of videos and pictures to be a lot more interesting than they would otherwise be. Once again, this had minimal effort put into it, but it does look a lot better than just a group of pictures, especially if you put your time into this to make it look a lot better than this. That being said, Minitool Movie Maker is completely free and once again available through the link in the description down below. Currently at this point in time, they support up to nine tracks. So I'll drag this all the way up as such. So there is tons of space to add text and effects on top of our video at the very bottom here. In fact, nine tracks to do so not including the video track over here. So thank you all for watching. My name's been Techno over here for Troubleshoot. Thank you to Minitool for sponsoring this guide. My name's been Techno over here for Troubleshoot, and I'll see you all next time. Ciao!